Hey guys, welcome back to Day to Day Chess. This is Sabina. A little bit late with the video today. I hope you enjoy it anyways. Um, as you guys already know, on the 30th of September, it was a free day at the World Cup. On the 1st of October, we are going to enjoy the first game of the match between Sergei Karyakin and Pet uh, Peter Svidler. I can't wait for that. Um, four games are going to be played at the World Cup, so it should be it should be fun to watch. But while this is a really great event to be um, that attracts lots of people, of course, it's a World Cup. Everybody's is um, enjoying the tournament and um, picks their favorite. There are other tournaments ta uh, taking place um, in the world. Uh, one of those is the Poikovsky Karpov uh, tournament. This um, tournament is, you know, uh, it's the 16th actually that uh, Karpov uh, is made um, by him, and it's a closed tournament. So I thought, since it's a free day for the World Cup, why won't I just choose a game from there and analyze it with you guys? And since, um, you know, it's very important to take to know your openings, but in the same time, make sure um, you you pay attention on how you develop your pieces and keep your king safe. I've decided to choose this game from today, actually, or, well, yesterday, September 30th, the game between Morozovic and Smirin. Let's see what happened in that game. Morozovic had white. He started with e4, c5, knight f3. E6, and Morosevich didn't go for D4. He played G3. So it's the Sicilian with G3. You can get some type of uh, French type of defense after D5, which is exactly what, what happened in the game. Um, e takes D5. E takes D5, D4. So basically we're expecting and seeing some position with an isolated pawn here. Um, so far, so good. This has been seen before. This opening, knight c6, just a normal developing move by black. Uh, when you're playing with an isolated pawn, you need to be very careful on your development. And because black is the one who's going to have the isolated pawn, he needs to be careful in the development of his pieces, not to uh, lose time with the development because white can, you know, especially with g3, bishop g2 is coming and d5 is going to be a weak, uh, a weak pawn and easily attacked by, by white. So black has to be very careful in his development. Uh, so now after bishop g2, bishop g4. Uh, what's the idea of this move? Well, just keeping the knight pinned here for some time and, uh, of course, developing the pieces. Castle. Now c takes d4. So, um, what's the problem in this position? Well, black would like to finish his development, but it's not clear how to develop this bishop. I mean, if you just put it in e7, then I take, and then you have to take back in c5. So, you guys probably are familiar with this idea. So, that's why in this position, um, black takes so that uh, in case of uh, um, eventually some re uh, recapture in d4 for the moment it's not possible right but in case of some recapture at some point well it's white who's going to recapture and black will not have to lose time playing bishop e7 bishop takes c5 so you just will play bishop e7 immediately and uh, of course in this pos particular position just capture just doesn't allow white to capture the pawn back so it's 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 a good move Another possibility here would be uh, probably knight f6, just uh, developing a piece and um, trying to get the king to safety pretty pretty fast because after castling, white already is ready to, to give rookie one check and uh, you'll have to play bishop e7 and then maybe a taking c5. But um, so in this case, after knight f6, probably bishop g5 would follow and then bishop e7 now takes d, uh, d takes c5 this is probably something else you'd see bishop takes c5 and now rook e1 check and black would normally play bishop to e6 and we would get just some normal position with an isolated pawn but um black is black is all right he's going to manage uh, defending that pawn for this game smearing chose c takes d4 because as i mentioned white cannot capture back immediately so it looks like um black is going to have a pawn up for the moment, but okay, 
eventually is going to be lost there with knight e2, b3, and the pawn is going to be captured back. So uh, here, uh, Morozovic played h3. It's very annoying to play with with a pin like this, so he's trying to get rid of this, this bishop as soon as possible to be able to capture his pawn back, and then put pressure on d5, which is the pawn left behind. Always, you have to be uh, taking care of your isolated pawn, so... Uh, black needs to do things fast because, for example, if you just go bishop h5, there's going to be rook to e1 check, bishop e7, now maybe g4. I'm okay weakening my position for the moment because you are still with your king in the center for some time, so this position I think is, is quite nice for, for white. Besides, uh, I have c4 coming, opening up my bishop, and maybe losing something on c6, some... Uh, material, your king is still in the center. This this should be some nice position for white, in my opinion. So that is the reason why after h3, black needs to hurry. So he captured in f3, queen takes f3, natural so far, right? Knight f6, bishop g5, now bishop e7. It seems like a natural, normal position, right? Black has this pawn up, but of course, as I mentioned to you earlier, eventually he's going to lose it. Um, even in this moment, white can just take in f6, which actually he did, and then capture in d5 if he wants to, right? You just get the pawn back and play. But um, Morozovic is, uh, you know, almost is 2700, so he was stronger than Smirin, so probably with white he wanted to win. He's, uh, he's an attack at, uh, attacking player, so... Okay, castle, then... Okay, if you trade the queens, I don't have anything with white in move 12. And if I go back, I still don't have much. This pawn in d4, although an isolated pawn, is well protected now. And even if I count knight d2, f3, still it's going to take me a long time to win it. And most likely I'll have to play c3 to get it traded off. So um, not a big um, big thing for white to do. That is the reason why uh, Morozovic didn't take the pawn. He actually played rook e1 check here. And surprisingly, in this position, Smirin blundered. He played knight to e5. A shocking move, in my opinion. You know, I mean, your king is in the center. You should be careful how you, you keep it uh, protected and then castle as soon as possible. Make sure you bring your king to safety and don't don't fall into any traps. Uh, knight e7 is just normal moves and they're... There were games played here, um, for example, uh, knight d2, now castle, and um, after knight b3, rook c8. There was a game that was played between uh, Glek and uh, Yonov. So, you know, this this is just seems natural, right? Finishing your development, you don't want to stay with the king in the center. Yes, you have a pawn up, but eventually you're going to lose it, so make sure you keep your king safe. And uh, surprisingly, knight e5 was played by Smirin. What a move. What do you guys think? Why is this move so bad? Take a moment, pause the video, and try to think about what's, what's happening in this position. Okay, so let me show you. Queen a3, a very good move by Morozovic. A natural as well, in a way. I mean, I stop you from castling. Uh, and what happens here? Well, you put your knight in e5, so you can't play bishop e7. You would love to, but you can't, because your knight remains unprotected, and uh, I'm pinning you, so I just win a piece, of course. And how are you going to castle? For example, if you play queen e7, the same thing happens. I just trade the queens, and with that, whichever piece you capture back, either I take your knight or I play f4, and you're losing. you're losing your knight on the pin. So what to do? I mean, it's just crazy. This position, there's no defense for, for black, really. I mean, f4 is coming. Um, and uh, it's a shocking, shocking knight e5. With the knight in e7, just imagine, if instead of knight e5, this knight would be in, uh, in e7, just queen a3 wouldn't do anything. I'm just castling. My knight is well protected there. But knight e5 is just, um, is just a bad move. So this this kind of gives you an idea of being really careful uh, for opening bl blunders, but in the same time keeping your king safe. 
So, okay, let's see how did Morozovic exploit this. Okay, he played queen a3, but it's not over yet. King d7. Uh, Smirin tried, of course, to, to maintain his, um, his pawn up, but in the same time, he wants to try to bring his king to safety on the other side of the board. So let's see how we are playing against a, a king that's in the center. Well, queen c5 for starters, just stopping the king from going on that direction. And also, of course, we want to get our pawn back. That's our, you know, first first thing we want to do. Keep the king in the center, but make sure we, we maintain our material advantage. Queen c7, black is trying to trade queens, but of course, we are attacking. We're not trading queens. Check. King c8. And now... Um, I think this move was interesting, but I think the I, I, I had a better idea here for why. Because c3, of course, you want to open up the files. This king is, is uh, in the center. But I think knight d2 would have been just a better, better choice for white. Because when you play c3, you want to make sure black has to take or you're going to take and open up the c file. So that's why I'm suggesting knight d2. And now if you play rook d8, queen e4, and then... I want to play knight b3 and then either, you know, rook d1, something. And then when I play c3, like I said, I want to make sure black captures back. After c3, black would have played d3, which I'm surprised he didn't. Because even if he stays with the pawn down, eventually he, he wants to make sure his king is safe. You would rather give a pawn and try to get some activity than, you know, lose, lose really fast with your king in the center. But um, Smirin played rook d8. Queen e4, and here again, I think d3 had to to be played to try to um, to keep the, the the position close. But he played a6, so now white is just um, getting lots of lots of uh, lots of advantage here, opening up the c file as well. So rook takes d4. There was this little trick here because white cannot capture because of knight f3 check. But why doesn't need to capture? I, I'm doing all right here. I can just capture on the other side. It just, you know, it's still a free pawn. And your king is still in the center. You're having trouble getting your rook from a8 out. King b8, of course, trying to, to finish up, you know, to get the rook out. Knight c3. Now, from now on, white is just developing his pieces and making sure uh, black cannot manage to coordinate his pieces and starting some kind of maybe activation on the second rank, some some attack. King a7, knight d5. And now we are happy to, to win this bishop because, okay, there are pawns on both sides of the board, so the bishop is going to be much better than the knight. Queen takes f6. Now, okay, let's see what's going on in the position where our queen is really outside of the, the play now. We need to bring it back. So that's what Morozovic did. Queen to c2, bringing it back, trying some, some threats here with queen c5. Knight d3, rook e3. Everything with tempo. Rook d1. Now you are on some other pin. Okay, it's not really a big pin um, because, okay, your knight can move, but uh, just white is trying to to trade the pieces and if you just move the knight now for example knight before there's going to be queen c5 and eventually i'm going to trade pieces uh, i have a pawn up here with white so the opening was turned out really great for for him um bishop f1 knight c5 trades trades are great queen f5 rook d7 defending f7 of course now white keeps attacking, you know, just no one move that white has no threat. Like now a4, threatening a5, and then bishop g2, and I'm going to win the knight. So rook c7, what to do now? Rook c4, tempo. Queen g5, threatening here. White is just keeps threatening. He could maybe try to just push the pawn, create a pass pawn, but no, he keeps he keeps attacking black, not giving him any chance to to try to create any kind of threat. A5 check. Now queen e3, keeping him pinned, threatening b4, king b8, what to do? b4, rook e4, attacking the knight, threatening checks there afterwards. Rook c6, now he went for h4, um, g6, bishop g2, queen d7, there's really not that much that black can do. Some checks here, king h2, and now um, white is going after g6. Now there are two pawn, weak pawns here. So queen h6, queen h4, 
queen f7 after rook g4. There's really not that much what black can do to defend. So I hope you enjoyed this game. Stay tuned for tomorrow's matches. Bye!